Hello everybody, my name is Provis and welcome back to more Surviving Mars Green Planet. Okay, so I did a little bit of research on the wiki to figure out where the heck that shuttle technology is, just in case it ends up being relevant, and it's apparently under the robotics tree, which I, uh, messed that up. I thought it was under physics, so we're gonna go ahead and continue working on that. The reason I want shuttles is because it will allow me to facilitate transferring my citizens around a little bit more, um, flexibly. In particular, I would like to be able to pack some up and send them over here to do some serious mining if I so desire in the future. But for now, it looks like that is not going to be an option. Why are things not working? We added some jobs to stuff? What's going on? Oh, wait, we don't have enough workers. Oh, we definitely don't have enough workers. Something recalculated. Oh, no. Well, we'll figure that out in a minute. In the meantime, though, we have built up a barrel dome, which means we're going to start unlocking more and more production uh, through various factories, producing our machine parts and our polymers and our electronics and so on. We may have to rebalance this a little bit because uh, I, I'm probably going to overconsume certain base resources, but at least for now, this seems pretty darn helpful. It just means we're going to have a lot less rare metals for me to work with as far as selling back to Earth. So I have to be careful with some of that, but I will continue expanding, make sure we are nice and self-sufficient. And then, yeah, the next big priority is going to be starting to work down some of the terraforming tech. I need a lot of technology so we can start turning this planet into something green and profitable. That's going to take me some time, so I'm going to do a lot of jump cuts in this episode and see if we can make some serious progress. Okay, we did finish with our machining factory. I think we can go for a larger one if I want. It does take electronics as a maintenance, which is a little on the unpleasant side, but I think we'll still be able to make that work no problem, given that I will be producing at least some minor amount of electronics using my rare metals. Okay, so that should be the last factory we need, technically, to be producing everything. Now it's just a matter of building up. We do need to get some more workers, that is for absolute sure, and this time, yeah, I do think going for a load of engineers is probably the way to go more than anything else. So we're gonna go ahead and apply this. And if we get some no specialization people, you know, that's probably okay. I mean, they'll still be able to do some work. That said, I still see a couple more engineers we could grab. They may have slightly less than ideal perks and stuff, but I'm gonna have to make do with that anyway. I just want more productivity through and through. And it looks like that might be almost all of the engineers that I currently have available. Which is just sad, so we might have to buy some more applicants at some point. But for now, this will do the job. Wow, we just unlocked a whole load of tech on the research screen, including the COT jet propulsion that I was looking for, finally! Okay, also a lot of these look really good. Huh. Man, that's a lot of technology. Alright, I'll take it. And yes, by the way, we are close enough that we can set up some passages to uh, get our domes connected if we so desire. There's not a huge uh, incentive to do so. Um, they'll be able to use each other's services and stuff they so well desire, but I don't think it really makes a big difference in terms of their happiness. Unless they're missing something like, I don't know, a bar or a casino or something, and gamblers want to go and uh, get their get their uh, their game on or something like that. That's that's one thing, but eh, I, I'm not really placing down those anyway, so getting passages is more just sort of a convenience thing for people to be able to move around if we so desire. Not really a high priority, but we'll do it anyway for the heck of it. Another breakthrough, giant crops. Unlocks giant crops with increased food output. Well, that sounds awesome. Gene editing the plant strains brought from Earth to Mars so they can better cope with some sort of Martian environment's peculiarities has allowed them to grow super-sized versions. You like salad? Because I freaking hope you like salad! You know something we might benefit from? A very small, like, nursery dome. We got a handful of kids. Like, ten, ten children and five youths, which I think still technically count as kids. If I were to build, like, a small little micro-dome over here and just fill it with schools and then export all of our children to go live over there away from their parents, that would actually be pretty effective, I think. Now, you might argue that that's like the state uh, forcefully uh, parenting the children and indoctrinating them, and I say absolutely. That is my intention. For the good of Blue Sun Corporation! I kind of like the idea. Let's go ahead and do it. We do finally have the shuttle hub, so now that this is researched, we can go ahead and build one of these things. I actually just made them a little bit faster, too, which is nice. So I've already started setting up some of the infrastructure we will need for some drone hubs and some power and stuff, just transporting resources, but with the shuttles up and running, we should be able to easily set up another dome right over here and start raking in those deep, rare metals. Oh, crap, I wasn't paying attention. We've got a food shortage. It's one of the few resources I'm not producing enough of, it turns out. Lots of starving colonists. Fortunately, I did just pair drop a load into the, uh, onto the planet, so I think we'll be okay for the moment, but, um, that's another good reason why we actually probably should also be looking at making a, a proper food dome full of botanists just for farms. 
Yeah, much as I would love to take advantage of this barrel dome with loads of mining operations, uh, if we can't get our food situated, we're just going to have to keep relying on a supply launch almost every day now that we have well over 100 colonists. So I'm going to go ahead and build a basic dome here, and this is where we're going to do our farms. We're going to start making loads of food so I don't have to worry about this anymore. Okay, we have our next dome, so what I need to work on then are proper farms. Um... And these can be placed in several of these different hexes, and they only cost me concrete to build, but they do produce a pretty hefty amount of food. The big downside to farms, of course, is they do consume a load of water, and we're gonna need to fix some of that at some point. Let's see, how many jobs each one of these offer me? Uh, six for each work shift. We may need to build some apartments and stuff off in this general vicinity. Um, that's probably okay. So let's go ahead and build some of those apartments just so we can fit a lot of people in here. That's going to be a load of farms, yes. And it's going to consume a load of water. But we can reduce that substantially by making use of a dome spire with the water reclamation system right there. And that's going to reduce the amount of water used by 70%, which will make my life a heck of a lot easier. Ooh, my rare metal extractor has expired. Oh, dear. Okay. Well, that sucks. Um, so that's all the rare metals I'm going to get out of this one. I guess we can go ahead and salvage it. It does mean that a lot of my geologists don't have anything in particular to do. Might need to relocate a whole load down to this barrel dome. You know, once I've actually got it all sorted out. Okay, the child dome has been built. Um, we will want to get our education and research. Let's see... The playground will be important for the kids. We definitely want to get a school. Now, I know that takes electronics, which is a little unfortunate, but it does let us try to avoid getting some negative perks on our kids when they grow up. So that's worth something. And then I guess we could go ahead and do, like, a little playground and stuff. Yeah, sure. That all seems fine. Let's just go ahead and give them a little bit of attractions. We should make sure we get a living complex so they have a place to stay all on their own with no parental supervision, and it's totally not going to turn into a Lord of the Flies scenario. No way. Can someone explain, explain to me how a goat got into the dome? Did someone smuggle their pet? Oh, there's more pets too. There's a dog and a cat. I, I definitely did not appreciate that. Um, well, hmm. I suspect that has more to do with one of the expansions that was added into the game. Oh good, another meteor storm! That's not gonna turn into an absolute 100% disaster, no way! I gotta say, the AI of these drones does leave a little bit to be desired. We have literally starving children in this microbiome, uh, microbiome. we have plenty of food, and they're just now getting around to delivering some, despite the fact that this small grocer has been at the highest of priorities. I don't know. Sometimes I just don't think I really understand these drones pathing in their priority system. But okay. Uh, here's something fun. Spy tech. The rivalry between colonies has attracted the attention of a spy agency, huh? Hmm, okay. Well, we could steal some stuff, including technological advancement, which I like the idea of. I'm a running a little bit lower on funds, but to be fair, I'm only just now starting to get the geologist uh, barrel dome up and a running. So this might, this might fix at some point. Um... Sure, let's go ahead and spend a billion dollars for the gold package. Uh, it's proven useful. We have obtained research previously unknown. Hygroscopic vaporators. Well, I mean, that is good. I can build moisture vaporators of my own. So I'm not quite as reliant on extracting water out of the earth than I was before. Still, I can't say that it's the absolute best. It's just sort of acceptable. Oh, finally, the farm automation technology is done. Okay, so if we want to upgrade the farms using electronics, which I am A-OK -okay with, that will reduce the number of workers necessary to keep these farms running at full capacity, and given that I'm still having a hard time producing enough food, apparently, or at least distributing it properly, this would be great. I can only fit so many more botanists in here anyway. So, okay, that is actually a huge relief for me. What else do we want to work on? Well, we can make our factories a little bit better. We could get our production up from other things. Let's see. Hanging gardens! Yes! That's something I've been looking for for a while. Now, it's going to take a long, long time to research, but it does improve the comfort for all residences in every dome that we build it in, which is basically going to end up being all of them except for the farming dome. Right over here, plenty of residences. We want a hanging garden. So over here, more hanging gardens, blah, blah, blah. They're fantastic. Absolutely worth having. Oh, no, our last living founder died. Oh, All right, rest in peace, friend, I guess. We've gone through, like, an entire generation at this point. It's Soul 83. Yeah, I've made a lot of progress recently. I've, I've been definitely doing a lot of the jump cuts. Um... It's mostly been rinse and repeat. Trying to grow, trying to make sure that I'm constantly having enough food. I am getting a little concerned that we're starting to run low on metals. 
So it might be time for me to go ahead and get some more metal extractors and try to continue importing as many geologists as I can. And I think I will end up doing that. Also, my explorer apparently broke down. So we're going to have to send some drones over here to repair it soon-ish, but I would like to finish up the ramp that I've already been working on over here. Which is actually close enough to done that maybe it's okay. There's a lot of anomalies up here, but there's no point in having these anomalies revealed if I don't have my explorer, so... Soon as we're done with this, we're going to go ahead and get that explorer back up and I'll run Trying to get my science output up there, using things like the research labs and such. We probably could turn on some additional shifts now if we want to. But I was finally able to fill up all three of these with full shifts of scientists, which is great. So now we're up to 1.7 thousand science per soul. Which is still not quite enough for my taste, it's going to take a very long time to get these hanging gardens. But, it is the best that I can do with what we've got at the moment. Oh, I also decided to go ahead and build a seniors community over here. Kind of like I do for the children over here, but this one's just for seniors, because seniors can't work. So why let them take up residential spots and productive domes when I can just send them over here to what's basically a small mini Florida? Yeah, that, that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm just sequestering them somewhere else. Since we're already specializing age kinds of domes, um, I wouldn't mind placing down another little micro dome over in this direction with the intention of building uh, effectively a university dome. A university dome would let me start training up youth into specialized citizens, which could be nice given that right now I think they're automatically just graduating as non-specialized, which doesn't do me a whole lot of good. So if we were to set up something over here as well, we can use the shuttles to transper, uh, transport youths over here, put them through a university program, and all of a sudden we're able to get more botanists, geologists, and whatever the heck else I need. What's this? The last war before the storm? Devastating news from Earth, a chain of attacks have reduced some major temples and landmarks of southeastern Asia. Whoa, okay. Terrorists of a new kind. Ooh. Okay, well, um, huh. I hope that doesn't result in some radicalized uh, citizens being sent my way. That would be kind of crazy. We do, in fact, have a mystery log now. Uh, this is probably a clue as to what our randomized mystery is. I'm not familiar with all of them, so I don't know what this one is. I'm skeptical that it's good. Now, oh, meteors! Ah, that sucks. So, oh, hey, more stuff. The last war as tensions rise. In the wake of the attacks in Asia, many dormant grievances between the nations affected have been reignited, some of which go far back in time. The UN has sent out a tension meter as it warns that the situation has the potential to escalate into an all-out war. Is this where surviving the aftermath begins? It might be, actually. So far, we see no adequate way to help from here. Find ways to keep the tension from reaching 100%. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, that would be quite bad. Uh, bringing tensions down to 0% would be resolved. Tensions will rise from events that happen on Earth and are out of my control. So, I don't know exactly what I'm going to be able to do with this. Um, but obviously, if Earth breaks out into an all-out war, it's going to be a little bit harder for me to uh, import resources. So... Out of self-interest, purely self-interest, I would really prefer that they don't, and maybe maybe they resolve this peaceably. We should help wherever we can. One thing I think I've been neglecting a little bit more than I ought to with the farms is the soil quality. There are ways to build this back up, depending on what you plant. You can either increase or decrease the soil quality, and obviously we want to get this up to about 100% just to maximize the gains that we are gaining out of all of our individual crops. Quinoa doesn't do me a whole lot of good. In fact, I think we probably shouldn't even be planting this at all in the first place. Wheat is also a very neutral crop. I want to get this up to 100%. So what you could do is plant down some cover crops, and you don't really get any food out of this, but it does get your soil quality up very, very quickly. We should have done this when we first planted down the farms gotten this up toward 100%, and then we could have just alternated between soybeans and potatoes or something like that. You can see the soybeans increase, and then the potatoes decrease, and you can just bounce around and get a lot of food. Alternatively, um, corn and fruit, I think, are even better. So, should have done that, didn't. I'll have to kind of reevaluate some of these a little bit better later. Um, let's see, I think we'll stick with some fruit and stuff for now. Just trying to get this up toward that 100%. This should actually get me there, and then we can swap over to corn and then alternate back and forth. We'll need to change these things up a little bit later. But hopefully you guys sort of understand what I'm trying to illustrate there, which is mainly, get your soil quality up to 100%, dang it, don't be a dumb dumb like me. Uh, the war is escalating some more. Okay, ripples made by attacks on Earth have toppled governments and paved the way for opportunists to wave a, uh, ride a wave of populist fury. Oh, grand, okay. 
Uh, let's see. Only United can we hope to conquer the void. Can strain war tension increase to only 5% or Earth won't change except 50 new applicants and war tension goes up faster. Well, I'm trying not to let it build up quickly because I assume once it gets too high, we're going to find ourselves unable to import. 50 new applicants is highly tempting, but we can always buy more. So I'm going to try to reduce the tension wherever possible. It just doesn't... It doesn't make a lot of sense. I guess, actually, no, I take that back. It does sort of make sense for me to enjoy the war back on Earth, right? Because when I inevitably turn Mars into a lush, green planet, that only increases the demand, right? Because <laughs> the people back home will be desperate. It also increases the odds of a government takeover. Eh, okay. I don't know. We're going to be good guys anyway. I'm going to try not to have uh, Earth explode in my absence. But let's be ready for some really nasty stuff. I would not be surprised if we're going to find ourselves in a situation with tons and tons of refugees. You know something I just realized, and I'm really sad about it? I don't think these hanging gardens are going to work as well for me as I thought they were. Why? Well, because uh, I don't think microdomes have a spire slot available. Um, which is okay, except I think that neither do barrel domes? Which is really sad, but I don't think that there are any spire slots. As opposed to the center one right here, where there absolutely is. But in a barrel dome, I don't think so. So we don't, won't actually be able to make use of this. At least not to the degree that I was really hoping we would be able to. Um, okay. Well, it does mean at some point in the future that maybe I do want to be, uh, replacing a lot of these domes with something a little bigger, right? Maybe we don't want to do this with the apartments, but we should just go ahead and accept that it's going to be something larger for my college. We want to just rebuild the dome? I mean, I guess we do have polymers. I guess we can't afford to just redo some domes. Relocate people as necessary, upgrade to something bigger. These hanging gardens make a big difference in the comfort of your people. We absolutely should use it if we can. On the plus side, though, finishing up with the hanging gardens did unlock... Oh, finally, there's the moisture vaporators. Good lord. Um, the Geoscope Domes, localized terraforming, that's kind of fun, right? It's extremely expensive, but it's awesome. A little slice of Earth on Mars. This dome is high comfort and increases the sanity of every inhabitant. Yeah, sounds nice. Um, the downside of this is uh, I already plan on turning the entire planet into a new Earth. So we can probably ignore that one. Alright, let's go ahead and place down a Martian University. And this dome, I'm going to go ahead and filter here specifically want to have youth. That's what I'm going for here. No seniors. We probably will need to have at least a few adults or middle-aged. Actually, I don't know. Can students still work in some of the uh, actual service sector buildings? Maybe not. We'll, we'll come back to that and check. But the important thing is we're going to have a university where I will be able to start uh, educating our youth. The other thing I would like to do, if we can unlock the technology for it, is the sanatorium. Because what I can do is place this in the same area, and that way I know all children that are born here on Mars not only will get a good education, but also they are going to be, um... Did I just run out of power? I think I might have. Uh, not only are they going to get a good education, but also we're going to have a lot of their nasty uh, quirks removed, which is excellent. Actually, now that I think about it in my university dome, I'm not sure the age group is actually what's going to matter, really. I think what actually matters here um, is going to be that they are the no specializations. And as soon as they have a specialization, we kick them the heck out of here. I think that may be exactly what we try to do. Let's see if that works. The Last War, Peacemaker. Our sponsors informed us it's now playing a major role in the peacekeeping efforts. Ah, good, the world of corporatism begins. <laughs> Oh, no. Food shortage, huh? Okay. We should brace ourselves for tough time ahead. Well, okay. So that sounds like refugees with loads and loads of food. Resupply with resources from Earth will be unavailable after five souls. Oh, gosh. Now, that is a scary prospect. Okay. Well, the good news is we did just upgrade to gigantic crops. So we can make giant corn... And giant potatoes and stuff. That sounds great, actually. Um, still only reduces the qu soil quality by 10%, so... I think we can afford to continue doing things like fruit trees, or perhaps it's actually better now to do a, uh, a quick crop that increases soil quality, like the soybeans, and then just do giant corn from there. That would probably be faster than doing fruit trees, actually. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. Okay, that's going to be our scene.
Yeah, university seems to be doing its job. It's actually really convenient to also find out exactly what you need for all of your individual jobs. Or all the, uh, leftover workspaces. So, for example, I know that we need a lot more engineers and geologists and stuff like that. Which is pretty darn helpful, actually. So this gives me an idea of what I want to be looking for in our next couple of passenger trips. And we should make sure we do as many of those as we can in the next day or so. Because pretty soon, we are going to be cut off from Earth. Hey, behavioral shaping is done. Good. Now I can truly mold the minds of the next generation. Sanatorium. Place it right there. There. When you graduate, not only will you have a degree, but you'll be the perfect indoctrinated little soldier. I mean, worker. Ah, cool. You can actually see it's got like a weird little therapy arena in the top. Oh my gosh, it's like a literal battle of the minds. Yep, and my supplies have officially been cut off. Okay, the supply embargo is in effect. Resupply with resources is now unavailable. Conservation takes priority. Uh, yes. So, um, hmm. So does that mean we can continue getting passengers? What about these supply pods? Okay, so I can get, I can get, like, prefab buildings and RC buildings still, but I cannot get any, uh, actual resources themselves, nor can I get more passengers. So I am glad that I used my third rocket, which, yes, by the way, I'm aware that I had a third one. I've just never used it. Um, now I'm gonna use my third rocket to drop off the last little group here, so... Okay, I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do with these guys. Can I even launch them back to Earth? Is that a thing that we're able to do, or do I need to just hold on to my rockets for a while? I don't know. These are the things I haven't had to find out before. And of course, we've got a meteor storm on the way. Oh no, these these things are fine. These things are great. These things are absolutely lovely. I love it. I'm so happy <laughs> to have a freaking meteor shower on the way. All right. Well, pretty soon I'm going to get some upgrades for my science production with things like the Hawking Institute, which is just an outright upgrade for my research labs. Eventually also the network node instead of a hanging gardens in here, just because it will, again, stack up more science. Since we're kind of cut off, I, I figure I figure getting a lot more technology could be my saving grace. Otherwise, though, I think the food is finally under control, and we seem to become more or more uh, less sustainable at this point. So as long as we don't get, say, an absolutely massive influx of refugees, I think we might be sort of in a stable position to deal with the rest of this mystery. And once I feel like I'm in a really good position having dealt with that, then yeah, it is absolutely time that we start looking at some of this te uh, terraforming technology. A lot of this is going to go by pretty quickly. But I don't know how far down the tree we're going to need to get in order to start altering things like the atmosphere, the temperature, the water levels, and the vegetation. That, we're going to have to find out when we get there. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, then I'd ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.